Let's take a look at an example of a graphical approach to solving a statics problem on a mechanism. We have a mechanism shown here in the picture. There is a force being applied at G in the direction shown. Its magnitude is given as 50 newtons. And there is a reaction moment that's going to be applied on member 2 in order to counteract that force in order to keep it in static equilibrium. If we look at the uh, unknown reaction forces you're going to get with the ground. Let's see, there should be a reaction force at the slider D. There'll be a reaction force at the slider E. And at pin O2, there should be some reaction forces. There's too many forces there to solve using our traditional statics approach. Um, in or using three equations, three unknowns. So we're going to take a look at breaking the, the part down into components and looking at the static equilibrium of each component and then using a graphical approach in order to, to si solve the problem. So let's look at first look at member 5 which is member CG and we know a force and a magnitude of that force on that member being the force F and we know the line of action of that force so we can start at that point with something that's known. We also can realize that member 5 is a three force member because there's a reaction force from the slider and there should be a force at the pin at C internally and so it's a three force member and we know that the lines of action of a three force member of all the forces acting on that member have to coincide at a single point. Since we know the slider has a normal reaction force we can draw the line of action of that force and we can find the point where those two lines of action intersect and then we should be able to deduce that the force at pin C should also go through that same uh, point that the other two intersect at and that gives us the direction for force C. We don't know the magnitudes yet but the magnitudes of the three forces should form a closed triangle in those directions. So if I draw two parallel lines at the tip and tail of my force F that run parallel with the lines of action of the other two forces I can say that those forces should form a triangle and the lengths of the this, the sides of this triangle should correspond to the magnitudes of those uh, forces that they represent. So since I know the force F is 50 newtons I can use the relationship between the lengths of the sides as I measured. Um, I measured one to be 2.8 centimeters and the other to be 4 centimeters. I can use that ratio to find that the force 3.5 is from uh, member 3, which is over at C, that represents that force. Uh, it should be 35 newtons. And I can draw those forces, uh, redraw them at where they act. Now, force 3.5 uh, also acts on member 3 and I can just draw the equal and opposite reaction uh, and call it 5, 3 it's the force from member 5 onto member 3 and now I know a magnitude and a direction for one force on member 3 there should also be a reaction force at the slider up at D and there should be a reaction force at the pin at B now I don't know the direction of the, of the force at D but I that's what I'm going to need to know. But I do know the direction at the slider D, that it should run perpendicular to the surface. And I can find another point of intersection of the lines of action between force 5, 3 and the force at D, which would be force uh, 1, 4. And if I can find where they intersect, I know that the force at B should go in the direction that will intersect at that same point. So I have the direction of all three, and I know the magnitude force 5 through. So if I draw parallel lines at the tip and tail of force 5 through, I can find a little triangle there that I can draw my forces on. And I know they have to form a closed triangle, and the lengths of those correspond to the magnitudes of the forces. So I can find a relationship then for force 2, 3 is the one I want. If I look at the lengths of those, if I measure those to be 2.2 centimeters and 2.8 centimeters, then I can find that force 2, 3, which acts at B, 
should have a magnitude of 27.5 newtons. And then I can draw an equal and opposite force on member 2. And there should be an equal and opposite force then on member at point O2 on member 2, because it has to be in static equilibrium. And if I look at two forces running parallel to each other, and the distance between them, the perpendicular distance between them, I can find the magnitude of the moment those create, which should be the force times the distance between them, which I can measure to be about 2.1 centimeters, which gives us a moment magnitude of 69.3 newton centimeters. And that's that moment should provide uh, the equilibrium to keep the mechanism in uh, static. So that's how you solve the problem.